29 of tithes. Be sure to set aside a tenth of all that your fields produce each year. Eat the tithe of your grain, new wine, and olive oil, and the firstborn of your herds and flocks, in the presence of the Lord your God, at the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name, so that you may learn to revere your Lord your God always. But if that place is too distant, and you have been blessed by the Lord your God, and cannot carry your tithe, because the place where the Lord will choose to put his name is so far away, then exchange your tithe for silver, and take the silver with you, and go to the place the Lord your God will choose. Use the silver to buy whatever you like, cattle, sheep, wine, or fermented drink, or anything you wish. Then you and your household shall eat there in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord or God, and, and rejoice. And do not neglect the lives living in your towns, for they have no allotment or inheritance of their own. At the end of every three years, bring all the tithes of that year's produce and store in your towns, so that the Levites, who have no allotment or inheritance of their own, and the foreigners, the fatherless, and the widows who live in your towns may come and eat and be satisfied, and so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. I'm delighted to be with you this morning as we come together on our first part of our stewardship campaign with this message of what does it mean to be a steward, part one. From the passage of scripture that was just shared with you that you'll notice the Levites were one of the 12 tribes that was prevented by law from owning houses or property or vineyards or fields. The other 11 tribes of Israel were allowed to own such properties and set aside a portion of what they were able to gain from their work and toil of growing crops and having livestock and doing business and commerce with the properties and houses and lands that they owned. But the Levites were not allowed to do so. If you remember a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about Nehemiah and I talked about the waves that were coming back to Jerusalem was Nehemiah, there were those who had a claim to land or property or inheritance that was inside Jerusalem. But for those who did not have a claim to land or property, they were ascribed to a tribe that they belonged to. And that tribe was responsible for taking care of them. They were allowed to work in what were communal vineyards and fields to be able to earn a livelihood if they belonged to that tribe of one of the 12 tribes of Israel. So even if they don't own property or land or houses or vineyards or things of that sort, their needs were provided for by their tribe that they belonged to. But the Levites were one of the 12 tribes that did not have land or property or vineyards. So the other 11 tribes would set aside a portion, a tenth of whatever they had to be able to provide for and care for the Levites that they might be part of the priesthood to oversee the matters of God and to keep the community together with understanding the laws and customs of the Jewish people and what had been passed down from Moses and Abraham, even the stories back to their early beginning with Adam and Eve and why are we here and the beginning of the Garden of Eden and the journey of Abraham and Noah and all those who had led them to this land that they now inhabited, even coming out of Egypt with Moses. So here are the Levites, and they are cared for by the community with a portion of each of the 11 tribes set aside for the Levites. See, when God set up this system of community, the tribes were families. They were all interconnected, kind of like cousins that we would think of today or brothers and sisters, a family of 12, that there was one in there for whatever reason that it was the responsibility of the 11 to look after that 12th one that was part of it. God decided to create a system of fairness, of equality, of equity, by not using a set amount of what must be set aside, but by setting aside a percentage of what was required. And God said it is fair and just and doable to basically set aside a tenth of whatever we have to be able to care for and provide for those that are in our community that hold our community together. Now in the scripture you'll see that not only is a tenth desire to be set aside 
for the Levites, but every three years, a tenth of whatever is in the field is to be set aside, not just for those 12 tribes, but also be set aside for the foreigners and others that were living in the land to care for and provide for them. And the sharing in the, this community, while they might not have had a, a lineage or a claim to be able to belong to a tribe, they were still part of the community and it was still the responsibility of the community to care for them. So every three years, a tenth would be set aside for those who were not part of the 12 tribe because they were part of the community. How interesting is it that God asked for a portion, a percentage, to create the system of equity and equality within the community that everybody gives something. There are those who have much, and, and it's easy sometimes to have the mentality that if someone has much, therefore they should be expected to carry the responsibility and weight of everybody around them because they've been blessed with so much. But God asks each and every one of us to share and to give, and based upon the portion of what we give, if we give 10%, those who have little but yet give 10% are equal in the eyes of God as those who have much and give 10% because it's the portion that God asks for. God bless us with abilities and resources. God gives us, you know, things that are entrusted to us to be stewards of, caretakers of, to manage, to be responsible and faithful in overseeing and administering. And out of those things that God gives us, God says, just put 10% aside to be shared so that when there are those who are in your community, whether they have great means and, and wealth and abilities or whether they're in a season of want rather than a time of plenty, that there will be resources to care for them. And those who cannot do the work that others do, like the Levites, who cannot be out there managing and owning properties, don't forget them or neglect them because of the work that they do on behalf of the Lord as part of the priesthood. Set aside 10% for them for their work that they are cared for as well. And also every three years, set aside 10% for those who are in the community to care for their needs to sustain them as well. I heard a story years ago of a, of a young man who was graduating from college and came to his pastor and said, Pastor, I, I need to get a job. I'm graduating with a degree. Could please ask the congregation to pray that I get this job? And if so, I promise that I will be a faithful steward of the church and pledge 10% of whatever I make for the rest of my life. <clears throat> pastor says, okay, and agrees. The congregation prays. This young man gets the job. He goes on, he gets a promotion. Again, he comes to the pastor and says, Pastor, please pray that I get this promotion and the salary increase with this job. He gets the promotion and the salary increase. Well, this man, after 20 years, grows to the executive level of the company and is now close to making seven figures at the executive level that he is existing in this. But he hasn't increased his pledge in about 18 years at this point. It's the same amount as it was after he got that first promotion. Now he thought he was giving more than most others in the congregation, so he thought he was being generous by giving what he actually gave, even though it wasn't a percentage of what he had promised to give. So the pastor came to him and said, I've noticed for the last 18 years, you haven't increased your pledge with your promotions that you've had with your company. So we're going to pray on Sunday that you get demoted back to whatever that position was 18 years ago and your salary is decreased by that much so you don't break your promise to God. That seems a bit harsh and, and unrealistic, but, but to think about that. Just because we grow and have more and we think we're generous because we give more, that doesn't mean that we're not responsible to give a fair portion to those who might not have as much of us. It's 10% is what God asks in the system that God creates and God establishes. A person making $100 a week, $10, is just as hard to give in the plate as someone who makes a million dollars and gives $100,000 a year in the plate. <clears throat> Although I would say that perhaps, you know, for someone making close to that million dollars, 100000 might not seem like that much to sacrifice was the extra 900000 but it's proportionate. God asks us to be faithful in sharing the gifts and abilities and resources. When it comes to stewardship, God doesn't care so much about the amount. Think about this. Everything that God has created, God already owns 
and has a claim to and can manage and do as however God pleases. So God is not looking for a handout or for resources. It all belongs to the Lord. The Lord has entrusted it to us to be caretakers of, to be faithful and responsible with whatever lot we've been given in life. And out of that, God asks us to show that we are faithful and responsible. And the means and the way in which God asks us to show our faithfulness and our ability to be good stewards is by sharing a portion of whatever God has given us with the abilities and resources to contribute. Everybody should have the opportunity to give and contribute. Everyone should be invested in the community, whether they have great means or they do not have great means at all. We all have equal ownership and equal claim because we are all equally loved by God. And in life, whether we're able to manage great things or whether we're able to manage just a few things, whatever gifts and ability God has given us, God has still given us the opportunity to do what we can with what we have been entrusted with. And it's our job to be faithful in responding to that. Now, as the church, we do our stewardship campaign and perhaps you're thinking in your mind, oh no, this is the pastor talking about money once again. And I don't want to think about stewardship in terms of, of that regard. I want to think about stewardship as what has the Lord entrusted to us to manage and how do we show that we are faithful with that? For example, we look at the building that we have. This is a beautiful, gorgeous building that we have. We've been entrusted with it. It, it is a, a hard and heavy burden sometimes to, to manage a building this size with you know, the age and date of it and all the care and maintenance that goes into it and all the challenges that go along with it. But it is a tool. It is a resource that we have been blessed with to use for ministry. And so don't think about the, the building as, as, as just a beautiful structure. Think of the building as something that is in care to us to be stewards and caretakers of, to use for ministry, to be able to honor and glorify God with it. And whether we're able to use every space of the building or share every space of the building with other groups that can be blessed by the fruitfulness of this resource that we have, it is in the act of sharing that we show that we are faithful to God. In the same way when it comes to contributing to the budget and all the expenses that go along with the operations of the ministry of this church, it is in the sharing of the resources together that we are blessed as a community because we equally give based upon a percentage system rather than a fixed amount system, which is what the Lord prescribes in the scriptures. Now we need to think beyond just you know our church community and, and who we are and how we care for one another as a congregation, but also to think about how do we bless and care for others who are in our community as well. And to set aside resources, perhaps it's every three years, a tenth of the budget, whatever it is, is set aside for missions to be able to give back to the wider community around us to be able to bless them. In the 21st century, we need to think of creative ways to be innovative and to be able to use the resources that we have to stretch every dollar, every cent, every resource that we have to its full potential to get the maximum impact of ministry. I'm joining with you today using this technology because I'm unable to be present with you. I, I looked around, I was looking for pulpit supply. It's very hard nowadays to be able to find pulpit supply because there are more churches gathering on Sunday morning than there are pulpit supply ministers to be able to cover at the present moment. And so I had to make the decision, do I continue to spend more and more time and resources to make all those phone calls that I had for pulpit supply, or do I find another creative way that could be able to deliver the message and allow us to be able to worship together and perhaps even save us a little money on paying for a pulpit supply minister to be present with us this morning. Some churches have already jumped to the use of technology to be get creative in the ways that they're able to put more money towards ministry and impacting the wider community than just, you know, what we've thought of how we always have to operate and how we always have to do things. For example, there are churches who have set up campus ministries where there might be a pastor at one church, even though there are three campuses or, or three satellite locations, there are three churches. And so there usually is someone who delivers the message at one church and it's simulcast or broadcasted or recorded and delivered at the other two churches so that on Sunday morning, three congregations can share one resource together and benefit 
and to be able to manage what has been a difficult and hard recovery for many of us was the pandemic. And I see this model growing more and more. And when we went through COVID, we learned about online worship and we were able to change and pivot and make that change. And more and more churches nowadays are incorporating using technology like this this morning to be able to do worship, even when they can't find someone to physically be present in the building to be able to lead worship. Scriptures say, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with you. And it doesn't say we have to be physically present. We can be present in spirit and mind. And I'm glad that I have the opportunity to be present with you this morning as you're in worship, even though I'm all the way out on the West Coast, on the other side of the country, in a different time zone, to be able to use this resource for us to be able to gather and to honor and bless God together. So in the coming days, as we go through our stewardship campaign, I hope that you'll think about what are some of the things that we can change, adapt, how can we be faithful in what we give, and that every resource that we share with the community to be able to bless one another, to bless the wider community, that it is used in a faithful way to honor God, to not mismanage funds or, or, or to dissolve or, 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 or use funds in an ineffective way for ministry, but to use it to be able to get the maximum impact necessary for the church to be vibrant and to be a strong and healthy community. As I said in the announcement, Paul couldn't go and visit every church that was in Asia Minor because the cost of him to be able to travel and to go to all the churches that, him, that wanted him to speak at was just not feasible for him to be able to do. So he wrote letters, and the letters were delivered by messengers to the various churches, and someone would get up in church on Sunday morning. It might have been a lay person. It might have even been someone who was called by the congregation, and they would take Paul's letter that Paul had written, and they would deliver the sermon, which was word for word from Paul's letter, read to the congregation. And so when we have letters like to the church in Philippi or in Corinth or Colossae or Thessalonica or any of the other cities that Paul wrote to, those letters were shared with multiple churches, kind of using that campus model, satellite model of ministry that I talked about just a few moments ago of, of being able to have a message shared in multiple locations from one person at the same time. Paul's technology in those days and age was to use a quill and to use papyrus and to use a messenger to send the letters to all the churches to be read with someone who would stand up and read it. Today I'm using this video platform to be able to speak to you with more sophisticated technology but not changing from what the early church did 2,000 years ago in the time of Paul. Let us get creative in looking at the ways that we can be able to reinvest in the future of the church and to be effective in the ministry that we have and share equally in the responsibility that we have to be able to bless one another with the gifts and abilities that God has given us, not just the resources that are amongst this congregation, but even the ways that we can create partnerships with other churches to be more effective in managing and sharing and blessing one another with the responsibility that we have, not just to be a church in isolation, but to be a church connected with the wider church and our wider church's mission, and to partner with our denomination, the United Church of Christ, in the ministry that we do to have the maximum impact upon the lives of those who seek Jesus Christ, and to learn to grow and develop in their faith, and to have the gifts and abilities, not only to bless those who are in their families, but also to bless those who are in their communities, and to make an impact and bless those who are around the world. So for that said, I give you thanks for your patience, and understanding today. I hope that you will pray and reflect upon what it means to be a steward of the gifts that God has blessed you with, to be a caretaker of, to manage, and to share responsibly, and what portion that you can give based upon your means to be able to share and distribute an ownership of the church and the ministry of the church together as we work in partnership with one another. With that said, let me offer this prayer. Gracious God, we thank you that you have blessed us. Some of us was education, some of us was gifts and abilities like music or management or leadership or a trade skill or whatever it is. Whatever we have, Lord, let us use it for your glory to be able to share and contribute in a meaningful way. Not that all of our time and energy is contributed to just the work of the church, but that we each share an equal ownership by sharing a percentage of whatever it is that you have given us in a fair and equitable way to be able to serve and sustain without any bitterness or sense of division 
that those who do more and those who do less somehow don't have equal seats at the table. We are all divinely loved equally in your presence, and for this joy of revelation given to us, that know we have value and worth, not determined by the wealth of this world, but by determined by the value in which you have given us, we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen.